I'm excited. Jupyter is finally installed on my computer and I can finally get to showing you how to do something productive with Jupyter. Uh, I'm excited to use this new tool. Uh, I haven't used Jupyter much in the past, even when I was programming with Python. It looks like something really good to show off how you code and, and then show the results of that code to other people as well. So what I'm gonna take you through in this video is how to set up a basic plot in Jupyter and then how to print that plot out so that we can, or well, print it by PDF, so that we can use that plot uh, in something else and the code as well so that other people can look at how we generated that plot too. So uh, I've got open here already Jupyter and I've set up uh, a new notebook in Jupyter. If you're interested in how I got Jupyter running in Julia, uh, check out my previous video. I'll put a link in the description below where I go through how to install iJulia on your computer and then how to run Jupyter notebooks from there. There's no need to install Anaconda. It's really simple. Everything's handled from inside the Julia REPL. So head down to the description below to check out that link if you're not sure on how to get Jupyter working from Julia. So the first thing we're going to do in setting up our notebook here to uh, make a plot with Julia is uh, import all the necessary packages. So in our case, we're going to, I'm recycling an example from a previous video I did on plots. So if you're interested in that video, hit subscribe and YouTube will suggest it to you. Uh, but I'm recycling the code from there where I plot the number of births by New Zealand mothers between a certain age, uh, as that was some easy CSV data to get available. So we're going to import uh, from Excel, then we're going to uh, set up a plot, and then we're going to print that plot. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, use those packages. So it's Excel files, data tables, oops, no space there, and plots. So as you can see, just type in the information to the first cell. Uh, the next cell is going to be some, uh, now I'm not running this yet. Uh, oops, no, sorry, insert cell below. So the next cell is, I'm gonna put in a bit of text to explain what we're doing. So we're going to uh, load in our data file into a data table. So we might make that a bit more explicit. So data table, uh, then new cell below. In this one, we're actually going to do it. So data table, I've just got the notes for this video off to the screen beside. Uh, data table, load in C, Uses Chris. My name's Chris, by the way. Nice to meet you. Births. Now, from the previous example, oops, I missed a talking uh, mark there. Now, from the previous example, I know that uh, this is sheet number, sheet named 30. Uh, very unambiguous there of me. Okay. Then insert new cell. And we're going to put in our plot. So, plots. And we're gonna do, actually, what I'll do is I'll run this cell first so you can see the table, and then you can see what we're going to plot. Uh, actually, I might have to run this one first. Okay, so in a second that will come up with the, that should come up with the data table. Now this is one of the troubles I found when working with Jupyter is that it doesn't give you any indication that the file is executing, or I couldn't see any indication that the file is executing. Uh, I would have thought that something over here might might be a better indication of, oh, this is it. Oh, okay, it's not a colored dot, it's just a single dot like that. It tells you when the when it's running. Okay, so uh, this is a bit of an experience I have with Julia, and the, the first time you import a package or run anything, it can take a while to show up, but then on subsequent runs, it is much faster, much snappier. So give me a second here and I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So that took quite a while to load in. Uh, it took quite a while in the practice run as well. I thought it wouldn't take so long, but the key here is that this little dot has now become uh, empty, I guess, where it was filled in before, which means that Ju uh, Julia's finished executing. As you can see here, we've got a table of the information that came out. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this table as the data cell is so that when we go to plot, uh, you can see where I'm getting the uh, columns to plot from because I'll show you this trick in a second. So we start our plot uh, and we do DT, our data table, dot year, our column header, and that extracts everything in the column. Uh, and then the second argument being the, what we're gonna plot against. And I also want to put the title on it to make it look good. So title equals, 
let's just call it New Zealand births. Okay, and prepare again for a while to execute. So we hit run. And as you can see, the dots come back, so it is executing at the moment. Uh, I found, again, the first time the uh, plots runs, uh, it takes quite a while, but then if we were updated, it might be quicker. So I'll leave you there, and I'll come back in a second. The computer I'm using to record this is by no means slow. Uh, it is a bit loaded with the recording and with uh, Julia running, but as you can see, it, does, it has just come up there. Uh, so what you can see is New Zealand births, and we've got our nice plot. Uh, what I might do to show you how quick this can be the second time it's run is just change this title uh, for certain ages. And you can see now when I execute, it'll be much quicker. There, it updates straight away. So it's just the very first time that something's run in, in Julia that it can take a little while like that. So I'll fix that up there. Uh, now the next step we're going to do is to print this out and see what it likes when it when it's printed. So to print in Jupyter, the easiest way I've found is to come up file and do print preview. Now I say that because if you go download as and select these options, uh, the easiest, uh, the output we're looking for is really PDF. We, If we're going to include it in a paper or a report, we really want it as a PDF, which is what I'm intending to do with Julia. Uh, however, I don't have uh, LaTeX installed on this computer and it is quite a, a large and messy package to install. Um, if, if you've been following along the, my story with getting Jupyter installed, you'll know that I don't like these large messy packages. I don't want software slowing down my computer even more than it already is. And that's one of the reasons I avoided the full Anaconda install for Jupyter and just went with the iJulia install managed by Julia. Check that video out in the description if you're keen to know more. Uh, and then the same for LaTeX. I'm not keen to have LaTeX a full LaTeX installation on this computer either. So one easy way I found to get around that is to go to print preview instead. So it comes up with a nice uh, print preview here of what we're going to do. Uh, and then we can hit print in the web browser and have the web browser do the printing. So I'd hit control P and then select print to PDF and then save it here where it comes up in the output. So uh, we're gonna say this as New Zealand plot. There we go, and in a second I'll open it up. Okay, now that it's opened up, you can see we've got this PDF of our uh, New Zealand plot. However, it does have a little bit of uh, nuisance information at the top about how we generated it. It's not perfect, but I find this to be an acceptable solution as an alternative to installing uh, PDF LaTeX. Uh, however, uh, depending on what sort of report or you're putting it in or how you're sharing this with other people, it might be a bit uh, tough to do. Installing LaTeX might be the better option. So uh, as you can see here, we've got our code, we've got our text, we've got our results as it comes through. Uh, and you can show this to other people to, to show off of how you put this notebook together. So uh, I'm going to share a few more videos like this as I go along uh, experimenting with Jupyter and, and finding out more features about how to use Jupyter. I'm really excited to get into these Jupyter notebooks. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about how to analyze data in Julia or how to uh, show your code or, and show your data using Jupyter like this, hit subscribe and follow along and I'll be releasing those videos shortly.